Okay, let's find the area in terms of x. So what am I talking about here? Well, I want to find the area of the yellow figure, okay, or the yellow uh, shaded region. So that yellow uh, um, shaded region is bounded by a rectangle, okay, so we clearly have a rectangle uh, here, and then there's a circle, okay, so it's not really totally explicit in this figure. It pretty much looks like a rectangle and a circle, but I'm just going to tell you that that's indeed what this is, but we don't have actual um, measurements. We don't have, like, uh, eight inches, five inches, or five centimeters, none of that stuff. We just know that this side is X and this side is X plus two, but that's enough information to express the area of this yellow region in terms of X. It's basically almost like writing a formula for this yellow region uh, in terms of X. So if you think you can do this, this would be a great exercise to review basic geometry and algebra. Certainly this type of uh, question you're going to come across uh, in your future if you are taking algebra uh, or geometry. So this is not just some sort of trivial type of question. It may seem that way, but you're going to encounter things like this in your uh, future uh, for sure. So if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and pause the video, put your answer into the comment section, but I'm going to go through it step by step in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link uh, to my math help program in the description of this video, but I'm a, I've been teaching math for decades. I like to think of myself as someone who explains math versus teaching math um, because explanations are typically just much more clear and understandable, and that's what I really try to do is I really try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. I think I have the right instruction for you. So if you're having a tough time in the middle, in middle school, high school, or even college level, okay, definitely check out my math help program. Uh, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you happen to be preparing for a test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, or CLEP exam, maybe even a teacher certification exam. Uh, definitely um, check out my math help program and all my test prep courses can, can definitely help you pass those courses. If you homeschool, I was just voted number one for middle and high school mathematics by a major homeschool publication. Pretty excited about that, so check out my homeschool program. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get to this uh, problem. Again, we're dealing with a rectangle and a circle, and we're dealing with area. So it's probably a pretty good idea to uh, remember uh, the formulas for the area of a circle and the area of a rectangle. So what are those formulas? Well, if you forgot, I'm going to go ahead and give them to you now. So here is a circle, and then emanating from the center out to the side of the circle here is what we call the radius. It's basically one half the width of a circle. So the whole width of a circle we call the diameter. Uh, it runs to the center, and then this would be the radius. That's one half the diameter. So um, the formula for area of a circle is area is equal to pi r squared, where r is the radius. Okay, so... Here is a lovely rectangle. What's the area of a rectangle? That's just simply the length times the width. Most of you probably remember this. Some of you probably remember that. But these are basic geometry formulas for area uh, that you definitely want to know, along with like a triangle and some other basic shapes and whatnot. So these are the type of things that you should um, have uh, contained in your long-term memory. Okay, So even if you weren't given a formula sheet, you should know these formulas. Okay, so if you forgot those formulas, you're like, okay, now I remember those formulas. Well, then go ahead and do the problem, okay? If you thought that was the only thing that you were missing, here is an opportunity to do this problem again. I just uh, gave you the formula for the area of a circle and the area of a rectangle, okay? So now you have to come up with a strategy to figure this out, and that's where the real fun starts. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we need to do this. All right, so the area of this yellow region... I have to, you know, stand back and be like, well, it's not the entire uh, rectangle, right? It's like the rectangle, but it looks like this circle part was cut out from the rectangle. And that's effectively how you have to think about this. So the, uh, the area of this yellow region is going to be the entire area of the rectangle uh, minus, okay, we're going to have to take away the area of the circle, like as if we were going to cut it out with some scissors, right? That is going to give us the area that we're interested in. So we need to 
express the area of, of this uh, rectangle in terms of x and also the area of this circle in terms of x. And then we have to basically plug it in this way. Okay, so we have the area of the rectangle, or we're, we're going to subtract away the area of the circle from this rectangle. So we need to create an expression in terms of x. So I basically just told you exactly how to do this problem. You already have the formulas, again, for the area of a rectangle and area of a circle. Now, it uh, really comes down to your algebra skills. Okay, Do you have the algebra skills to do this? Let's go ahead and tackle this now. And uh, let's start off with the rectangle. So the area of this uh, of any rectangle is going to be its length times its width. So we can express that here. It's pretty easy. x times x plus 2. Let's just go back up there. So we're just going to take this x and multiply that by that x plus 2. Now here, it's not explicit that there isn't grouping symbols or parentheses. Anytime you see a sum or difference in algebra, always put per, uh, parentheses around them or be thinking that. So if I had like y minus 3, uh, x plus 7, you don't see parentheses, but it's a good idea to always remember with sums and differences uh, to put uh, grouping symbols in there. So it just it kind of lessens your chance for making mistakes with the distributive property. All right, so the area of this rectangle is going to be x times x plus 2, and then I can distribute this x because these uh, here we have our nice lovely parentheses that weren't there, but we put them in there. So we have x times x, that's x squared x times 2, 2x. So this is a nice expression for the area of the rectangle. Now, let's go to the area of a circle. And this is a little bit more interesting. So remember that the um, formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I'm going to need to know the radius. Now here, you can see I already have the radius as x over 2. But let's take a look at what's going on here. So if this whole thing is x, from here to here is x long, this is going to run through the center, okay? What is the radius from here to here? Well, it's going to be half of this x. So I need to take that x and divide it by 2. So this is x over 2 right here. This is x over 2 right here. And then uh, this radius and this radius uh, right here is the entire diameter, which is x, okay? So you need to have um, been able to figure that out to move forward with this formula. So our radius is going to be x over 2. Okay, So when we use this formula right here, when I substitute for r, I'm going to be plugging in um, x over 2, and that's what I have right here. So the area is going to equal to pi r squared, or in this case, pi times x over 2 squared. Okay, So let's go ahead and apply some basic algebra skills. So x over 2 squared is x over 2 times x over 2, which is going to be x squared times 4, then times this pi. Okay, so this is, remember, you're squaring this, and then you're going to multiply by that pi. So we can write that as um, x squared over 4 times pi, or pi over 4. Another way you can write this, probably a little bit more appropriate. Uh, this right here uh, is fine, but you could also write it this way, uh, pi uh, over 4 times x squared. Both expressions are perfectly fine. And uh, now we have the area, an expression in terms of x, of the circle, okay, in this particular figure. So here's our rectangle, and here's our circle. So we're going to subtract away the circle from the rectangle, okay? And this right here, this entire expression, would be the area for that yellow uh, figure uh, in terms of x. It's basically like a formula. Uh, for this, for the area of this particular figure right there. Okay, so how many of you understood this? Well, actually, that's not the right question. Okay, hopefully all of you understood this, but how many of you got this right before I explained it? Well, if that is the case, I must go ahead and give you a good old 1986 flat top haircut. I was sporting that haircut way back in the day. That was such a cool haircut. I don't know why people don't wear that flat top haircut anymore. It was pretty cool, but... Um, Anyways, that was, uh, you know, just as cool as your ability to do this problem. But uh, let me throw in an A plus and a 100%. Nice job. Okay. Now, if you didn't, you know, get this problem right, but you understand the mechanics of, okay, how it works, well, that's the whole point of the video. Okay. I know a lot of you out there, you know, may have questions about this. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm doing a problem like this. How, how does these, uh, how do how does this type of problem work? They're basically going to work very similar to this, okay? And this is a common uh, question that you will encounter. So remember, like, geometry questions are often tied in with algebra. So that's why, you know, um, 
you know, math is all interrelated and interconnected. So you just can't be like, oh, forget algebra. I'm going to take geometry and do much better in it. No, you actually need algebra to be successful in geometry as well. So the whole main idea is just to, you know, work on uh, developing your math skills. So watching this video is good, but really what's better is for you to actually practice math. Okay. Watching math is not the same thing as you, um, you know, getting better at math. It's the same thing as if you were, uh, wanted to be, you know, a good basketball player. If you watch someone that's really good in basketball, are you going to get good in basketball? You see what I'm saying, right? You actually have to go out there and shoot, uh, the basketball and practice, practice, practice. Math is no different. But uh, anyways, if this little video helped you out, please consider helping me out by smashing that like button and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, uh, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my um, math videos, all the content that I post. I do this um, because I am obsessed with helping people, you know, overcome their math challenges. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.